Welcome to San Diego's most popular local morning news. Good morning, San Diego. Thank you, Phil. As we have mentioned, fans will gather at the Staples Center in Los Angeles in a matter of hours to honor the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. But right now we're taking a closer look at the troubled life of the singer who may have died as a result of prolonged prescription drug use. Investigators found Diprovan inside the home where the singer died. With more on the dangers of Diprovan, we are joined this morning on the phone by Dr. Ken Holtorf. Good morning, doctor. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. You know, I think most people hadn't even heard of Diprovan before uh, Michael Jackson and the possibility that he uh, was on this drug before his death. We're learning that this is a very powerful drug and it's only usually used in hospital settings. Is that right? Yes, it's a very short-acting hypnotic and that is used in anesthesia. So what it's used for is people for very, especially very short surgical procedures. It works very quickly. People go to sleep, but it has to be maintained as an infusion to keep people asleep. So it's very bizarre to use it in this manner. Mm -hmm. And Diprovan isn't the only drug that has been associated with Michael Jackson. There are reports that he also used uh, OxyContin, a Valium, and a host of other medications. And I guess now the big question is, h how did he get them? Obviously, doctors were prescribing them to him. But how, how big of a, uh, how often do doctors um, do this? Do they prescribe drugs to people who really don't need them? Well, it's very interesting. It's probably a whole host of medications and multiple narcotics, Demerol, Oxycodone. And I think it's the people that he surrounded himself with. And, you know, in celebrities like this, it's very difficult to say no. And they will find physicians or anyone that will do basically what they want. And so he was prescribed many things that he shouldn't have been on. And especially when it comes to Diprovan, there's no reason for using it for sleep. It just makes no sense. Again, it, it works very uh, quickly as soon as you turn it off. Um, it would wake up, and it's very amnestic, so you just forget, and it, it can uh, significantly uh, suppress the respiration, so you stop breathing. And especially combine that with the, uh, the, the narcotics, that's a, basically a prescription for death. It's, it's crazy that this was used in this manner. There were reports that Michael Jackson suffered from uh, insomnia. I, is that a reason to use Diprovan? No, it, it, it absolutely is not. Again, it's used for anesthesia mm -hmm. to put someone to sleep, and it, it burns when it goes in. It has to be used with lidocaine. I mean, using intravenous medicine for someone to sleep, it just makes no sense. And you need someone there to support the airway because people will stop breathing with it. You know, to, basically it's used to put the, the ventilating tube in. Right. Um, and that's why you need to do it because people will stop breathing. And if you don't do that, they can stop breathing and choke. Now, if someone was there to support the breathing, the breathing, it'd be okay. But it seems, you know, who knows what went on, but uh, generally probably stopped breathing and that then caused the heart attack. You know, I'm curious, this, uh, toxicology reports aren't expected to be in for a couple of weeks, but you mentioned that this is a fast-acting drug. If that was the drug that killed him, would that drug still even be in his body? It, it, it actually would, because even though it's very fast-acting, because it goes into the brain and out very quickly, the elimination half-life is days, so there'll still be some trace um, uh, elements left of the, of the Diprovan. Mm -hmm. And as a doctor, what do you think the lesson is here? I mean, obviously, the, the tragedy of his death, but um, there's more at stake, isn't there? Uh, there really is. When you look at you know, there's these celebrities that they get these doctors to do anything they want in, in this poly, uh, a pharmacy, and probably multiple doctors prescribing multiple medications, and it just shows that the danger to, to doing this. Mm -hmm. And now, um, Attorney General Jerry Brown, he is uh, just really all over this case, just like the Anna Nicole Smith case, where she was apparently prescribed drugs by doctors, and those doctors are now being prosecuted. Do you see something the, the similar happening here? I, I, I really do, because unless he somehow got the Diprovan you know, off a truck that fell off or something where they can't track it, um, I, I think there's going to be some serious problems and, and maybe mm -hmm. more than even people just losing their license, but actually jail time. And how often do you think this happens, just in run-of-the-mill cases? Well, I, I think patients will generally oftentimes get medications from multiple doctors and be prescribed um, higher dose than they should. You know, it, it's very difficult to gauge what a person's pain really is and how much pain medication that they need or how bad is their insomnia. So you have to go by patient reports. So it is difficult and especially if patients get it from multiple doctors, there could be serious problems. Dr. Ken Haltarf, I appreciate, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for talking with us. Great. Thanks so much. All right.